So Germany and the SS have invaded Poland. Poland is now split into two between Germany and the SS. On the German side, they've already copied and pasted the same oppression that they were giving the Jews, the Jewish people in Germany. They've copied and pasted that in Poland. Let's see what happens next. The Germans find themselves in control of one and a half million Jews. And these are not Jews like the Jews of Germany. Jews in Germany were very assimilated, uh, but in the East it was immediately visible who is Jewish and who isn't by their hairstyle, by the clothing they wear, by the language they speak. But Tamula, in anti-Semitic propaganda, Jews were described according to stereotypes of the Jews you would find in Poland, but hardly ever in Germany. They suddenly discovered there really were Jews like the ones described in the propaganda. These are Ostjuden. The kind of Jews that Hitler and the Nazis hated most of all. They are Orthodox Jews with kapotas and peos. They looked to the Nazis. They looked revolting, disgusting. And so for, for some Germans as well, uh, these initial weeks after they invade Poland, there are many of what I would call rituals of humiliation or rituals of violence in which they will grab Jews off the street and cut their beards that no one attempts to stop. I mean, it's, it's uh, if anything, some people are encouraging them. From the moment they arrived in Poland, the task of the German troops was to terrorize the Jewish population. The campaign of hate and violence would force the Jews to flee the areas that were to be part of the Reich and drive them into the Soviet-occupied zone. In just a few days, Wehrmacht and Einsatzgruppen units would murder 600 Jews. Orthodox Jews were the prime targets. In addition to their favorite entertainment, the beard game, where they would cut, burn or pull out Jews' beards, often tearing chunks out of their cheeks, the Nazis enjoyed making these Orthodox Jews jump, dance and sing at the... So they took away the jobs, they took away their businesses, but they didn't take away the ability to sing and dance for them. For their amusement. Sounds very interesting. I wonder if they bounce basketballs or throw footballs. Bonfires on which their sacred books were being burned. They whipped them, forced them to eat pork, and carved stars of David on their foreheads. One soldier wrote in his diary, the people living here are beasts in human form, with their beards and caftans and their devilish grotesque faces. They disgust me. If you weren't a sworn enemy of the Jews, you become one here. A lot of Jews fled at the very uh, last few months of 1939, and they brought information about the atrocities which started almost immediately under German occupation, and people had family across the border. Some messages did get across, but the problem was that the, the Soviet authorities didn't spread this information, and to some extent even counteracted it because they were afraid of provoking a war with Germany. So while the Jewish people in Poland which is now occupied by Germany and the SS, right? So the Jewish people that are on the SS side, they, they split it up half and half. So the Jewish people that are on the SS side, while they're celebrating, the Jews in Germany are facing how many atrocities? And not only that, but while they're celebrating, the SS is hiding the information from them regarding their family members just on the other side of the border. After the German conquest of Poland, Germans have to develop some kind of policy for the Poles and also for the Jews. But it's remarkable that they have no policy for either. Hitler does not know what he's going to do with conquered Poland. Finally, they decide that parts of Poland will be annexed to the Reich and the rest will be made a sort of a colony under Hans Frank. And he no policy in place, huh? So they create one. So the SS, yes, the SS that, you know, the Jews on that side of occupied Poland was so excited about having. Yes, those very same SS, um, they decided to create a task force to kill all parts of the Polish intelligence and certain Jewish people. 
the parts that were incorporated into the Reich were going to be cleansed of Poles and also Jews. And this was a massive program of ethnic cleansing. The south of Poland was to be the first territory occupied by the Germans. So they had to move all the Poles and all the Jews out of there in order to install Germans in their place. So the Nazis began a huge program of uh, eviction. The nuns of the National Socialist People's Aid Association look after the Germans. For 20 years, these poor folks have lived in cellars with no light or sanitation. Countless families were reduced to living in misery by the Polish authorities. Living quarters abandoned by the Poles and Jews are cleaned and handed over to the Germans. At the same time, Stalin let Hitler understand that the Volksdeutsch could leave. If they didn't want to live under Soviet rule, they could go. The Nazi leadership comes up with a new policy to bring the Volksdeutsch home to the Reich. Himmler was also responsible for the native-born Germans living outside Germany. There were hundreds of thousands of them in Ukraine, in the USSR, in Poland. Over half a million ethnic Germans are brought into the Greater Reich. So the Jewish people were living in really bad conditions. Then they were pushed out of those really bad conditions. Then the Germans came, fixed it up, cleaned it up, and then moved in. Why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> Gentrification. They never managed to get rid of enough Poles, and they never managed to settle the Volksdeutsch. But the massive forced displacement of hundreds of thousands of Poles is a training ground. The Nazi leadership, men like Eichmann, learn a great deal about mass movements of people, roundups, processing, and training people, getting them onto trains, shipping them out, dumping them somewhere else, is a rehearsal for what happens later to the Jews. Poland is a laboratory of the final solution. The first plan that comes out of the head office of the SS is a plan for a Jewish reservation. Something like the reservations for the Native American Indians. So the SS develops the idea of a so-called reservation in the area of, of Lublin. Eichmann begin to deport Jews from, uh, from Prague, from Ostrava, from Vienna. This is a kind of an experiment. The first deportation that took place under abysmal circumstances it was incredibly cold. A lot of people died right away. Horrendous experience, and it's just uh, in cattle cars. It doesn't work out. In fact, it's a failure. It's a disaster. Hans Frank had screamed and shouted and said, No, I don't want your Jews. Don't send me Jews. We can't take any more Jews into this area. We're full. We don't know what to do. We can't feed them. We can't house them, and so on. So stop sending us Jews. Everything was rushed, in a hurry, improvised, and it very often failed. And the question remains, what do you do with one and a half million Jews in Poland? They have to be contained. So the people were then left with the problem then we're unable to do so. So the blockages built up, out of the blockages then, big ghettos were established. There is no other plan. There is no other vision. No one knows what to do with the Jews in Poland. And that is why in Poland they go into ghettos. They declared that all Jews had to go into the ghettos. We knew that was to be the fate of the Jews under the German regime. Throughout the whole territory, Jews were gathered together and isolated in defined areas. During the winter of 1939 to 1940, the ghettos were established, just as in medieval times. Access to them was controlled by German forces, and it was impossible to get out. In some places, the Germans built walls to isolate them, under the pretext of containing the various diseases the Jews were said to be carrying. Les Allemands uh, confine les Juifs dans des the Germans confined the Jews to the ghettos and decided that these ghettos should be run by the Jews themselves. 
Someone would be put at the head of the Jewish Council, and he'd be the only person they'd negotiate with. He'd carry out his orders and be responsible for all the Jews. And so that you have this grey zone in the middle uh, of people who, in a sense, are, are, uh, are victims but have been incorporated into the machinery of destruction of the perpetrator. So that's the part that blew my mind. This is us. We are confined to ghettos. And Dr. Claude Anderson talks about how during the 1970s and 80s, how the amount of black politicians that were putting place in our neighborhoods was like up like 70% or something like that, right? But yet and still, black people only gained about like... Uh, gained nothing in financial wealth. We were still at about 1% of the nation's wealth. So that ought to tell you right there that where are our politicians and what side are our politicians on? And how is gentrification also becoming possible if we have people in place in, 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 in political uh, offices that are supposed to have our best interest at heart because they look like us? but they don't have our best interests at heart. And we've been voting for them for years. We admit in Detroit, Detroit is 92% black. We got a black, we got a Chinatown, Asian town, Arab town, Greek town, Pole town, Hawker town, Cork town. But if you build yourself a black folk, that's racist. <laughs> and, and, and guess what your leadership said? You sure is right, that would be wrong. <laughs> Yo, we don't, we don't want to do that. We come a long ways. We came all the way from social, we've been, we're socially integrated now. We don't need anything. And it, I said, but you don't have anything. I, yeah, I know, but the little bit we got, we, 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 if we try to build something for black folk, they'll take that away from us. And that, and, and that took me back to 1935 when a guy named George Gershwin wrote a play, an opera called Porgy and Bess. And right in the middle of the Porgy Bass, they got Porgy's out in the middle of the black na neighborhood singing, we got plenty of nothing, and nothing is plenty for us. I said, nobody's that silly. And just thinking, Detroit, Michigan, when I was, I was trying to set up that business district, black folk had, a, had an annual disposable income in Detroit of about 11, about $11 billion between the city and the schools and everything else. Disposable income. And they, you see, it went into bankruptcy. I told them then, if you, if you start practicing group economics with your $11 million and make your money not even necessarily bounce eight to 12, bounce 10 times, now you got $100 billion. Because the money will come around past you 10 times. If the money circulates around, your $11 billion will become what? 10 times becomes $100 billion. You know what they, what they told him? Well, doctor, that would be racist for us to do that. And so now Detroit went bankrupt, and now whites have taken over Detroit. They're going to take over every black city in the United States. They're going to they're gentrify them with immigrants. They're going to bury, bury, bury you beneath immigrants coming in, and they're going to come in and come over you and bury you. Then they're going to privatize all the public resources. And I told them in Detroit, I said, Detroit, if you let all these immigrants come in, they're going to take everything of value out. They're going to they, 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 they privatize the bridge to Canada, the tunnel to Canada, the city airport, the zoo, Cobo Hall, Jolo Serenium, the historical museum, um, the golf course. I go on that. They, and now they got all that. And now you got 92% blacks sitting there, not only on anything personally, they don't even own anything publicly anymore. They'll lose it. They got in Washington, D.C. When I went to Washington, D.C. with President Carter, I ran Jimmy Carter's campaign in Florida. For instance. I got to Washington, D.C. as an example. And we had a 78% black city. They used to call it Chocolate City. Now it's down to like about 41 to 42%. You're going to get wasted. You are this nation's official underclass now. And underclass means those individuals, by the pure nature of their social...